Hello and welcome to another episode of the Art Department Podcast. Um, we're back here, Emmanuel in San Francisco, myself in Singapore. Um, and we got another episode for you. Uh, this time we want to talk a bit about, um, I think, a concept that a lot of people are very familiar with, like the 10,000 hour like rule. I don't know, is it a rule? Um, about the amount of practice you need to get good at something, right? Um, or at least get to a level where like you are employable or something like that. Um, I think it's uh, it has its like I think it was popularized by um, the author Malcolm Gladwell, um, but the concept is based on a different um, uh, research. Anyway, I think uh, Emmanuel had um, he, he recently um, went to Paris, heard a lot of good speakers there, um, and he also embarked on his own journey with uh, learning sculpting. Um, physically and digitally and uh, I think you had some uh, interesting thoughts about this 10,000 hour thing and you kind of it made you kind of rethink uh, what it means yeah I mean uh, well first of all uh, the 10,000 hours is you know like you said popularized by Malcolm Gladwell in his book Outliers but it, it was based on the research by Anders Ericsson uh, it was just just a paper, basically, which I have to link for. It's you know, it doesn't really talk about ten thousand hours. It talks more about you know what it takes you know to get mastery at anything, right? So that's it, you know, it's a paper based on that. Uh, and I think you know Malcolm Gladwell kind of formulated his ten thousand hours, uh, in, you know, into you know ten thousand hours. Um, and you know I. For me, I've always been a huge proponent of 10,000 hours because, you know, table tennis, you know, so I went All from, right. you know, not knowing how to play to, you know, to U.S. team, you know, and I was like, you know, and it was given by my coach, uh, you know, Sean O'Neill was, you know, Olympian who, was, who told me, hey, you know, 10,000 hours. And and I, I think there's a lot of truth with 10,000 hours, but the more you know and that was many many years ago right. so uh so now i you know i i'm always you know as i'm listening to all these uh people talk about art and you know things like that and, and it's always you know be more prolific do more practice more uh and it really led me to think uh is that really uh i mean i I was a proponent of it, not even not that long ago. We did a podcast on 10,000 hours. Right, right, right. I mean, that, you know, and, and it, it is effective. Obviously, you know, the basic of the 10,000 hours is 10,000 hours of deliberate practice, right? Not not just, you know, like waving your wake and pen around, you know. It's, it's, you know, literally, if you don't deliberate practice, which, you know, a good example is driving, you drive, you know, we drive well, how many years have you driven 10 20 years yeah uh, 20 25 going on almost 25 years yeah now. so why you know why are we all not race car drivers because we're not deliberately practicing right. how to drive right better right, right. so uh so it, it's based on the theory of driving you know of practicing you know 10,000 deliberate hours but it's missing a lot of other things uh and i think it's in those things that I think that's why a lot of people are frustrated, right? 10,000 hours, I got to do 10,000 hours of this. Oh my God, you know, they look at it, it's daunting. Right. You know, it, it sucks the energy out of you. Oh my God, you know, and I was thinking, okay, I got to do character stuff. What do I do? Oh, okay, 10,000 hours, you got to do, you know, like your figure drawing, draw the head from every position, all this stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, that's just boring me. Right. And people aren't taking into account that you have to be excited. You mm. have to be interested. I mean, if you're not excited and interested, then it becomes not deliberate practice because you're right. going through the motions. I mean, that, does that, you know, like for your, your Japanese, right? I mean, if yeah. you're not excited to go into that lesson, you're probably coming out with it learning very little. Probably, yeah. So, yeah, for, for a bit of context, right? So um, I, I, studied, I started studying Japanese again um, uh, some time ago after leaving it dormant for like uh, uh, many, many years. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 been very interesting. Um, also, in in relation to what you're trying to do, right, with with your own study, and uh, yeah, you have to. I mean, you have to have that excitement and that that motivation, um, because there are going to be. I, mean, I, I do have to say there are areas of study where you do have to 
force yourself to go through certain areas which are not necessarily that exciting but that that motivation is what drives you right the motivation is what what gets you through the days where you don't feel like studying but you know like you have to to keep that momentum going um but but yeah but without that without that excitement without that will to do it like nothing nothing's really gonna happen i feel that's very true yeah i mean i i i agree to a certain extent i think you know no matter how mundane the thing that you're doing because it could literally be like you're on your you know you're doing vocabulary yeah exactly. uh, for something and it's not interesting but you know you're looking down the line maybe you know my writing it will help my writing of course, of course. and that's where i can be creative with it and yeah uh, but I think you always have to bring some kind of excitement into it. Of course. Like the excitement might be, oh, well, you know, I want to write and I need this. Exactly, exactly. So the excitement carries. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think it, a lot of what people talk about now is a very dogmatic sort of just be prolific. Just do a lot, you know, like right. like I've heard a lot of uh, people tell me, hey, you know, like I I've heard that, you know, like if I, you know, if I draw every night. Uh, then it's one more drawing than that person isn't doing. So I'm going to beat him. Right. I'm going to be better. And I'm like, at, I think at some point I agreed with it. And then now I'm like, well, you don't want to beat anybody. Uh, it's not yeah. the attitude, right? I mean, you're not learning vocabulary to, to you know, to yeah, exactly. get better or one up on anybody. Yeah, you're exactly. just doing it because you love it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I do have to agree that um, earlier in life, I w that was definitely my attitude, right? That like, yeah, I was working, I was working, uh, uh, I don't know, a Friday night, Saturday, d just because I knew that other people weren't. And it felt mm -hmm. good to like, oh, so I'm going to get ahead, right? Or like even with... Um, um, my attitude towards like uh, running for example was the same that I felt like oh my gosh I just have to run a little bit faster than the other guy I have to run a little bit more often um, I mean it, it does have an effect right um, you can't deny that you will get better but um, I think then we come down to like yeah technically maybe right technically yes you're going to be a little bit fitter technically yes you're going to have one more image under your belt right that maybe is going to improve your dexterity your muscle memory or like uh, how you handle certain apps or that kind of stuff right but it doesn't really touch on i don't know if that really is going to improve your images or your like i don't know right it's it's um yeah i was just writing you know but better the word better better than what at the cost of what because yeah. better means you are one up on someone Right. That's better. Right. Because I'm better than you. Mm. Otherwise, there's no description like that. So I would say not to, you know, like at this point of my life, I mean, I was exactly like what you're mm. saying. Right. I mean, table tennis, come on. You got to beat the guy across from you. Right. 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 So you got to, you know, like oh, you got to score loses. attached to it. Right. You got to score. Yeah. That's like, uh, but you. what if now you don't look at it as better, but it's a uh, it's a test of how I've learned what I've learned, uh, let's say in table tennis, or if you're running, the whole point of running is for you. Mm. And it's not to beat anybody. Right. Like if they can run just as fast, good for you. Right. If you're getting uh, enjoyment out of it, good for you. Uh, I just don't want people to feel like I just gotta, you know, work hard. That's it, you know, just work hard. And, you know, and if I work harder than the next guy, I'm gonna get the job. Uh, you know, that's not, necessarily true and i think the most important thing is not working hard so you can get the other you know get the job that the other guy didn't get but mm. i would say try to express yourself more and find truth in what you're doing more so that you're actually having fun doing what you're doing and if you're having fun doing what you're doing you're already winning exactly like and that that extends to i think every part of life actually because it's i mean we we mm, always have yeah. that angle of course of like making art right that's the thing um and um i guess for for most of our listeners there there is a very direct connection and for us as well right to to our livelihood because it's our job right so it's it's always um it, like um how do, how, there's always a balance that needs to be struck like yes we we want to have that creative fulfillment but at the same time we need to stay employable and all this kind of stuff right whereas maybe for hobbies and stuff it's really more about like yeah we should do it for the enjoyment of it right but i mean 
whether that's running whether it's learning a language whether that's like learning how to cook or anything right it's it's like does um do i do i have to be faster than the other guy maybe right maybe that's part of my enjoyment of it but what i realized in in recent years is more that um yeah i do i try to do it for myself and the aspect of like I mean, I, I always have my app with me, like I'm tracking every run, right? And I used to look at it and try to be like faster than uh, the, the the last run, or I tried to be faster than some of the people I knew who were sharing their progress on Instagram or whatever, or Facebook as well. And you always wanted to be the best, right? Even even if it were, even if it was just like the only person who knew that you were faster was yourself right but that was kind of like your motivation um, and and maybe for some people that's really like fulfilling right but for me recently i think um just just to be able to be in a certain state of mind is is far more important for me right now rather than just like um really like sweating every last ounce of energy out of my body or whatever right um but so I was wondering if um, for you, with with your recent uh, um, studies that you started kind of um, your sculpting and really trying to, to do something different, um, in, in what way really has that like, um, like, are, are you, did you start going in it like very consciously trying to like rack up as many hours as quickly as possible with, with your sculpting journey or did you kind of question the 10,000 hour thing like even before that? Well, I was questioning it before that because I think, in, in, you know, as the months ticked by and mm. I was talking to Stacy, which is my wife, uh, you know, we talk a lot about this kind of subject mm -hmm. and I was getting more and more. I mean, you know, I was getting more and more tired and burned out mm. and just not in a, in a great space uh, in terms of like creating art. Mm -hmm. And and I think just the dogma of thinking oh, I got to practice more wasn't the right thing for me. Mm -hmm. so the right thing for me was to practice less okay. and to come from it from a a much more relaxed creation standpoint. Uh, because you know when I was making the research on the ten thousand hours, the thing is you have to you know people what they don't put in it is like you have to get it, they calculated it, twelve thousand five hundred hours of rest like you know rest for your brain rest not sleep rest like rest in, away in between from that those thing. ten thousand hours right it, yes yeah. and then what you need is thirty thousand hours of sleep right like that you know the, the, they're just saying well ten thousand hours but you know you can't just go well i'm going to shorten that ten thousand i'm going to do it straight through i mean that doesn't work like that if anything you're going to get to a point and you're just going to burn out because you're going to be like, I, I can't stand doing if, you know, heads from every angle, 10 hours a day. I mean, at some point, you're going to lose the love for what you're doing. Right, right, right. Um, and which leads me to uh, uh, the, the funniest thing is I had a call with somebody um, and I, we were looking at his portfolio just two days ago. And and he's like, well, how, how do I get better so I can get a job and all this kind of stuff. Right. And I was just like, you know what? You're good enough. You're not the best out there technically, but you're good enough technically that I can understand your images. What you gotta do is put your heart into it now. <laughs> you know, and I think a lot of people is like, well, how do I just 10,000 hours into the technical aspect so I can be so proficient? And they completely forget that you can do 10,000 hours, like you can be mastery of technical or and they forget you can also be a, uh, 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 mastery of the creative. Like nobody talks about that part of mm -hmm. it, right? It's all about technical, right? Like in art and we're learning about how to draw, how to compose, how to, you know, whatever, you know, whatever your discipline is or Japanese, mm -hmm. right? You know, how much, you know, how, how do you, what do you, how do you write uh, writing basically right. or, 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 or how do you, you know, learn the language, but it's all technical. Right. But in the end, what about mastering the creativity, the creative side of you? And I think everybody has that, but nobody really dives into it. So I talked to this, uh, this person and, and I just told him, Hey, you know, I think it's time to forget technical as long as you have enough technical that mm. if you want to, you know, this is a boy. Okay. It looks like a boy. 
you know, it may not be the best drawing or the best painting of the boy, but but if it's got you know the emotions and the things across that it needs to come across, that's good enough. What are you trying to say with this painting of this boy then? Which I think it's more important than anything because out there right now, if you want to get, you know, you want to get somewhere, get a job, all that kind of stuff, the first thing is to stop thinking about getting a job and start thinking about how to do the best work that you can all right. that, that comes from inside so that everybody looks at you and go, oh, I want to hire that person. Yeah, maybe the skills aren't the best, but that comes. I, I don't know if you remember that, the interview we did with Jason Shire. Um, well, I remember we did an ago. interview. <laughs> <laughs> but he, I basically said to him, I said, would you want to hire somebody that's skilled? Mm. Or do you want to hire somebody who has a lot of uh, sort of creative thought? And he's like, hands down, creative thought. I can train the skill. Mm. I can't, you know, if you don't have creativity, I can't, you know, or if you're not in tune with it, I can't tune you in that easily. Right. So to me, that's why I'm like, all this kind of stuff is flooding into me and I'm doing this sculpting now like in clay. Right. Uh, so it's completely new. Uh, and sculpting in general, it's kind of new. I mean, it's not mm. something I've done for 20 years. And um, I'm coming at it from a very uh, feeling standpoint. Like when I sculpt something now, I don't think about how am I going to get good at heads. I just think about what do I feel and what do I want it to feel. And if it doesn't look right, then I'll do it again to try again uh and then i'll do it again to try again but it's always comes from a sense of like i'm trying to express something and then i'm finding ways to go about doing it as opposed to just all right every day 10 hours i'm just practicing heads and then i'm going to do that for a month and then i'm going to be able to sculpt anything i want <laughs> you know and yeah sure if you can last that month <laughs> because a lot of times, you know, I've, I've done that, you know, oh, draw, you know, from every angle. So I've tried that, right? I did that for like days and I'm like, I don't want to draw anymore. And I didn't right. draw for like years. <laughs> it's true. So I mean, I, you know, I, it's just one of those things where I'm like, I don't know. I mean, for me, I'm really questioning the 10,000 hours, just the, 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 the mere, like you have to do this amount of hours. I, I'd rather you be excited and do less right and maybe technically it won't look so you know like uh you know it's not like super technically done but i get it i feel it and if i feel it i'm much more inclined to want to see what comes out of you right. even you know to hire you or your next piece of art um than somebody who's like well that looks like a perfect face but i feel nothing right i mean i don't know I think we're, we're, we're trying to say, right, that, I mean, it's it's not necessarily like, we're not necessarily saying like, oh, you need, you actually don't need 10,000 hours. You can do it faster, right? Or like, oh, no, like it will take twice or three times that long, right? It's not at all what we're, what we're getting at, right? It's, um, it's more about that, like this artificial number doesn't really mean anything and it shouldn't be your guiding principle, right? Whether that's technical or whether that's, creative actually right it's this has no bearing it's really your attitude towards the thing you're doing i mean i've i've had many times like where i try to learn something new right and and uh, i can get going for a certain amount of time and brute forcing it um i can think of like i think uh, like houdini like i wanted to learn houdini so bad um uh, because i saw everybody else doing like amazing work <laughs> in it but it's kind of like um I mean, it's also a thing um, where you, you work on it for a time and then you have a hard time like uh, continuing the, the practice because, yeah, like you, you, you realize your heart is not in it and um, you, you're just doing it for some other reason. Um, that maybe it's just envy, right? Like you see somebody else doing some cool stuff. It's happened very often. Like um, and, and yeah, there's that, that very... Um, um, that very uh, uh, true thing where like, yeah, it's, it's while you practice, you realize it's not for you. Right. And um, you have to be very honest with yourself. I think a lot of times, a lot of times people just pursue a certain, certain thing because it's, uh, I don't know, they think it looks cool or like there's a certain amount of fame attached uh, that they think it, it like the person 
that everybody's looking up to like oh i want to be like him and it's um yeah it, they, they try to study and they try to force it right and i think that works to a certain degree when you're younger but uh, i think as you get older um you won't be able to to sustain that i think purely on like brute forcing it i feel yeah no i agree i mean i think and i think mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, go ahead. No, uh, there, does, uh, that kind of brings me to like um, um, a, a different aspect of of this um, idea of just like uh, head down and just kind of work, 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 right? Um, I think there's there's to a certain degree like a generational aspect to it, um, something that maybe has been handed down from parents. Um, or like a certain work ethic that um, maybe used to work in a in a previous generation or was necessary in a previous generation, um, um, but I think there's this common meme going around where like um, I think it's kind of like uh, the the Generation X like the ones before Millennial were like uh, considered very hardworking and um, and and basically well, I totally like forget like who, who's the x who's the gen, gen z i don't i am totally generation confused. x is generally like considered <laughs> like the ones after the baby boomers i think like so like mid 60s to like 1980 or something like that right um so that's what generation x to that's like generation that's x, gen x right and baby boomers are the ones one? before before right just after the war um and oh, um okay so they were they're often being said as like really like working a lot and just like kind of brute forcing everything um and of course you will find these days a lot of like managers a lot of people at the top from that generation whereas like i don't know millennials like any like kind of like uh, i don't know early 80s to um, i think 2000 or something is considered millennial and um they are kind of in transition right more like uh, um they grew up with like modern like more modern technology when they came of age like mobile phones touch screens internet that kind of stuff right and then of course like the even later ones who are really uh, um i think is, is it gen z i don't know right um maybe i'm getting confused here but like w the ones that really <laughs> like from birth on were really exposed to like modern technology right um and and i think the let like there, there there always seems to be that that um a little bit of a gap or like difference in attitude where I don't know the one generation accuses the other one of being lazy or the other one uh, the other mm -hmm. way as well um and um with the newer generation maybe like i think you mentioned it to be more like sensitive about it and and more um willing to look at things in a different way more technical technologic technologically mm. like um versatile um, and and easier to pick things up and and learn different learn in a different way um, and I thought that was that was quite an interesting um, aspect well, to it. Um, and I'm getting a lot of that from my my wife's students mm -hmm. uh, because I I go speak and and I I listen to them mm -hmm. you know she tells me about them uh, and I you know I've had some students of my own that are younger and and I can say that I mean I'm always very impressed with how sensitive and creative uh and mature mentally mature they are because i i'm definitely gen x or whatever the mm. old gr group mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. yeah. but and i'm definitely come from the work hard you know like w work your ass off you know be prolific work harder than the next person kind of a person mm -hmm. uh until now i'm i'm changing my tune because i'm trying to be open uh, and there are more than one, there's more than one way to do something, uh, especially now that everybody's having such a hard time wondering, hey, do I need to work harder to get a job? Do I need to work harder to get better? And, and, and I think this is a very appropriate, but the newer generation, they, they have, they don't really have much of a problem getting creative, you know, cause I appreciate that because for me, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, but it took a lot of like, okay, you know, like kind of going against what I was taught, which is work your butt off, mm. shut up, you know, man up, you know, kind of that attitude. So, so yeah, I appreciate that um, from the newer generation. I think the older generation definitely is more grumpy, <laughs> more like, oh, yeah, you know, like, you know, you know, haven't put in your dues, you know, all that. And I'm like, who cares about dues? 
as long right. as they can do what they can do, forget the dues, man. Like I, I really, you know, I don't, I don't subscribe to that anymore. I used to, I don't anymore. And I'm like, if you can do it, or if you can tune in and do give me something unique, if I had a company, I would want to hire that person. Right. Oh, but they, they may not, you know, work the weekend and work their ass off and take this on as their whole, no, oh, I don't care. I care about what they, they bring, you know, and how we can, can connect and grow together uh, in, in the workplace. Right. And I, I think a lot more people are becoming opening to that, you know, more open to that. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, it's going to take, I think, um, this kind of thinking, right? I mean, a lot of the existing kind of system is based on the simple, like, calculation of, like, how many years have you done, right? Like, how many years of experience do you have? And therefore, in, in you being put into a certain category of, like, like artist level, for example, like, I don't know, like junior, senior, lead, whatever, right? It's, it's, it's very much based on like, um, um, mm -hmm. like how many years of experience you have in the games industry, right? I mean, there's, there is a, there is a factor, of course, how many years you have, like, uh, like how, how much experience you have doing certain jobs and how much you understand about the pipeline and everything, right? And ha I mean, but yeah, is that, is that really like a good benchmark? I, like, I think we have to kind of, in the future like rethink that i think there's that that thing about like oh yeah but i'm i'm 30 years in the industry like like i should automatically have like um like uh, i should be uh, uh, in a certain position or i should do that right and then why is the guy with only 10 years experience getting the job right um there's there's sometimes that kind of outrage but like um i think but i also mm. think with that thinking uh if you find yourself getting there right like you're older mm. And you think you have all this experience and, uh, you know, maybe it is time to, you know, because you're older and you have had all this experience, you're kind of stuck mm. doing the same thing. Right. And you're kind of like, well, is this rinse and repeat? But are you actually going to grow at all rinse and repeating? Right. Like if you like where you're at and you're happy, great. But I'm saying if you feel like there's something missing, you need to change some things up. Otherwise, it's going to be rinse and repeat for you until you retire you know, and maybe you feel like, ah, oh, you know, regret. I, I wish, you know, I would have gone for that. Like for me, I'll, I'll just use me as, as an example really, you know, easily is I've, I've always wanted to do figurative stuff and I, I've always been afraid of it. I've always shied away from it. And, and now I'm just like, I'm just diving in because I'm like, if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? But you have to stop the grumpy sort of, uh, you know, everybody owes me something mm. attitude and just kind of go, you know what? I'm just going to start from nothing. I'm going to try it out, you know, and I'm going to give it my best shot and try to have some fun because, you know, it's very, it's much easier for younger people because they're more resilient and they're more carefree. Mm. But they don't mind. <laughs> they don't mind. Carefree. Like the, the thing is, the longer you do something, right, the longer you invest in something, you feel like you need to continue um, because you've already spent so much time. Um, but yeah, if, if you haven't, then uh, maybe it feels less precious to you and you're willing to kind of start over, um, again, but like, there's a different aspect. And you're stuck in your way. Yeah, right? exactly. I, mean, I don't know. I, are you ever feel like you're stuck in your of way? Course. Like, oh, I'm just, you know, of course. And because I mean, starting something yeah. new is difficult, right? Starting like you, you're comfortable. You're just like, ah, oh, yeah, but it's so easy. Like, um, I don't really need to try and that's why I can just kind of continue. Um, but like starting from zero again, right? Like that's, that's a very humbling experience. And, uh, um, if, if you want to admit that at, at, I don't know, with 40, 50, um, you really suck at a certain thing, right? That's not an easy thing to say. Right. Um, but I'm, I, I, I actually have a, a very, I just, this just came to me, mm. this question, uh, and I, you know, for those of you who haven't listened to Simon's interview, listen to it. But I, what I found interesting was that he said that, you know, he, he switched careers when he, f his kid was, you know, just born mm. and he wanted to l set an example mm. for his kid because, you know, he, he, you know, who am I as a father, if I don't actually show you can go after what you want. Yeah. And I wonder, do you have that thought? <sighs> That's a good question. I mean, I will be even be, I mean, I, I did that switch kind of before like my kids were born. So I had less of a like feel like, um, 
that that I had to like I owe the kids something like I I did that switch like he did from like uh, graphic design to like making websites to like entertainment design but I I just did it a bit earlier right um a couple of years before my kids were born so I was already like um quite happy that like I, I don't know like I had that direct connection to like I could show my kids what I was doing right what I do for work um and uh like I remember there was always like a big disconnect between like I had no idea what my dad was doing until I was like uh, mm. way older right and and I wasn't really interested because it didn't seem like an interesting job at all um but um I think with um like I think it came to me though with with learning uh, Japanese again that uh, because my kids learn a lot of languages and um there's always that thing where like you tell your kids that they should learn um but you yourself, of course, are not l really learning anything, right? They, the kids don't see you learn something. And, exactly. And, and mm -hmm. kids are very much like they, they imitate, right? They, they look up to you and, and they want to do what you do. Um, and yeah, in that sense, uh, I think it's good to, to have that, that, like to show that uh, role model aspect that, um, yes, I am also learning, right? They, they, the kids are always seeing me like uh, my head stuck in... Uh, books and, and taking lessons and um, my wife is also learning um, alongside them right so I think we, we try very hard to to show that aspect that like yeah learning is not only for kids it's not only like you have to go to school and then that's it mm -hmm. right but that this is really something that that continues should continue like continuously until you're old right um, mm -hmm. I was wondering, like, an, a different aspect about the ten, ten, like the, the deliberate ten thousand hour practice kind of thing, um, whether we agree with it or not. But like, um, uh, how to phrase it? Like, do you do you feel like? I mean, we we kind of like say ten thousand hours until mastery, but as if mastery is like a like a, a I don't know, like a, like a tangible goal or like. Um, uh, like a certain state you reach uh, uh, in your mind and then like you are like an enlightened master or whatever and you can float i have no idea right um <laughs> it's not like that at all but it's 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 um so i'm wondering like do you think let's say you practiced a certain amount of time and you feel like yes i'm now i can get jobs and i can um I know how to do this kind of stuff and um, now it's really like a, a journey of like how do you say like like a, a, with diminishing returns right the more you practice the smaller the increments of improvement will get because you're already at a really high level um, and I think generally when it comes to artists people really look up to like the ones that have been doing the same job for like 30 40 years mm -hmm. because they like i don't know untouchable they're like the absolute masters of a field and of course they have put in way more than ten thousand hours they have a hundred thousand hours right um like it, how is it for you like do you do you feel like it's worth like for yourself in your in your head is it worth to continue on with the same thing and and um like reach like a different level of mastery Whereas well, like, hmm. on the opposite side, like, like, oh, after 10,000 hours, let's, let's, let's just call it 10,000 hours. Or after you understood a certain thing, you can make money with it and your kind of thing. Do you then lose interest? And do you want to hmm. try again from zero with something different? Like, I was just wondering. Well, I mean, I think first, you know, mastery. I mean, if you're talking about well, anything, right? I mean, you can master the tool. Uh, you can master, you know, the you know the the syntax and sentence structure in Japanese. Mm. You can do that. You can master that. But to master writing mm. and creative, you know, anything, a, any creative endeavor, I think that's a lifelong. Mm. There is no mastering right. that. That there is only because you change, and it changes with you. And every time it, so I've changed. Mm. You know, I've changed. Even the funny thing is, in this podcast, the the length of time we've been doing mm. this podcast, I've changed. Mm. I've changed in the way I see things. I've changed in the way I am. And so for me, uh, I, I'm much more about living deliberately. 
uh, and right. that means just day to day and enjoying and being able like the more I can uh, have something stimulate me creatively the more enjoyment I get out of life I find for myself and I'm not looking to be the best technical anything I mean I need I need to be technical enough that if I'm doing a hand you need to know that's a hand mm. uh, but you know uh, that's about it and sometimes I will, you know, oh, this hand doesn't look like how I want it to look. So I'll try to understand and get better at that. Uh, but I think ultimately for me, uh, you know, there's, I love art and I love that it's a lifelong pursuit uh, and it changes as I change. Uh, and it may be sculpting now and then later it may be completely, it might be drawing. Uh, I may, it, it may be anything. Uh, but whatever it is, I just want to make sure that I fully express myself because that's what I'm into now. And I find that whenever I express myself, people always like that <laughs> piece of art. Right. So, you know, it's, it, it also serves another purpose of, well, people wanting that as well. But even if they don't, I still want to do it. So, you did, you, uh, did your urge to become really good at table tennis come like do you think it came out of the same kind of um, urge that now your sculpting is coming and you just didn't know like how to deal with it back then or and you felt like no, you needed no, no, to no, get I, something to do something different beside art no it came from a different place it came from a place of ego um, and it came from a place of like you know I want to get better at sports mm -hmm. because I want to be more confident uh at something mm -hmm. uh and and i i thought you know the, the the training because since i was young my dad told me you you have to train you know and you're lazy mm -hmm. he you know he would tell me that from my whole childhood so it kind of you know for some people they go okay i'm lazy and they just keep going and do that but for me i went the other way i w went completely nuts uh in trying to prove that i was good enough and i you know for me table tennis was a real good you know you beat the guy or you don't mm. you know and so i'm like i want to go and win and beat people and because for me the ego needed that and you know it was not until i i was really tired of trying to find that winning and losing that i that now i just said okay i stop i'm done because i don't want to win anymore i don't want to lose i don't want to win right 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 i, I you know this should be something i want to do because i love doing it so you know that was the motivation for table tennis mm, i mean interesting really and and that was you know that was literally 15 years ago right. so you know i it, it came you know it it came from a whole different place ah, okay. but sculpting now it's a, it's purely just what do i have in here inside and how can i bring it out because that's what i'm about i'm about a lot happening inside i want to mm. everybody has something inside they want to tell right. somebody about so for me, what does that mean? And how can I do that? And it's only because, you know, years with, with Stacy that, that I even, you know, have that brought out of me, you know? So, so I, I really, that's where I am at now. It's got nothing to do with how good my sculpts are because they're not, but right. I, I express myself and I, I love that, so. Yeah, I think a lot of, I mean, I think a lot of people hesitate with that um, also very well-known artists I think hesitate with that because um, maybe they feel like unless they are given a task which they can execute on a technically very high level they don't have anything to say like they would say that of themselves like they don't have anything or like um, I mean it's also difficult right to express that they they feel like they wouldn't be accepted for what they want to put out because on the fear it's too yeah. different from their day job or like um i don't know for for whatever other reason right um i mean that that's what's going to happen you know i had to come to terms with that you know i'm going to do sculpting and you're going to see a lot of sculpts mm. coming up in instagram and, and i'm totally okay whether people like it or they don't like it mm. because i enjoy doing it and that's all that needs to happen right. and i but i i get you a lot of older artists don't want to put themselves out there you know because right. it's like oh man you know like well, i gotta build another audience <laughs> you know like it's mm. it's hard right. you know i get it but i can't i can't live that way 
of being afraid. You True. Know? I mean, but th there's also, I think, another thing which I can think of, whereas like you already kind of know what the creative process is like and like you have it like a lot of i think uh, like artists like commercial artists like us they have it ingrained in them that um you have to hit a certain quality i don't know quality bar or you have to um hit a certain level so that like it, it It, it's it's as good as your other work um or like you can be yeah. employable like the, we, we i think I, f i feel like we we put very like economic constraints on on our learning and uh, uh trying to to do something different right whether that's like you're maybe you're like you're like a character guy and you want to do environments or the other way around or you want to learn drawing sculpting Uh, or Houdini, I don't know, whatever, right? Um, you put like incredible like pressure on yourself because you feel like you need to hit a certain level very quickly. Mm. Um, and, and then you realize you, you actually have a, a lot of shortcomings and you don't actually know a lot of things outside your very specific field of expertise. Um, and, and then I think a lot of people just give up because Like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I do the, I'm like one of the top environment guys in the world. I'm not, I'm not talking about myself here, but like, like the, the, some guys is well, like, you are. is like <laughs> one of the top guys. And then like, well, he's starting to sculpt and it looks like crap, right? I'm, I'm, again, this is like, a, okay, <laughs> let's do a completely different example, right? There's like the most amazing, like, like. Are you um, trying to say no, something? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the most amazing, like, uh, whatever, like, uh, um, Uh, Matt Painter out there like he's amazing like he does the, the like he works on all the top shows right in the world and and he's considered a legend right and then he, but he wants to he wants to I don't know paint with oils or he wants to draw figures right and he's absolutely terrible at it because he has no clue about anatomy right um no like there's no relationship to anybody living or dead right um and and I think a lot of people would would will hesitate to to show any of that or even embark on that journey for fear of like like I don't know maybe imposter syndrome like fear of being found out that he actually can't draw right um because it's not necessarily like part of his day to day job and and I don't know he's been like doing matte paintings for thirty years I don't know um so i think there's there's stuff like that and uh, yeah a lot of respect to you for like um i mean doing like really making that change right because you feel like it needs to happen so well i mean so i i think you know one of those things is you know first is you know i'm thankful that you know i've worked for 20 plus years and i've you know i've saved up some money to allow me to go on this journey because not everybody mm -hmm. has the capability of financially being able to do this because, you know, I'm taking time off, you know, mm -hmm. part of the industry is <laughs> not the greatest right now. So it's also probably a really good time to do that. But, uh, but I'm also using this time to ask myself how I want to live for the next 10 years, mm -hmm. the next five years, you know, or whatever. And if expression is where I want to go, then, I gotta put myself out there. And, you know, I think uh, some people would have that imposter syndrome you're talking about, but, you know, I'm me, you know, I, I'm, I, 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 I feel like what I do, uh, if it's from the heart, it will speak to somebody. I, you know, granted that, it, you know, like I said, it, you know, if you do a hand, it needs to look like a hand. It can't look like, you know, a foot, you know, then, <laughs> then your skills aren't there you know enough to make people uh, suspend their disbelief right they, they need to understand you know it's like w watching a short not all the shorts are done well mm -hmm. uh technically right but there's some shorts that technically might not be the best but the idea is really mm -hmm. good but it, it just has to be good enough so that you can kind of okay i can look past the mm. the technical skill Because that can change, but if the idea is not there, it could be the best looking film. I mean, I've seen a lot of films that look great, but absolutely say nothing. Mm. So for me, I prefer the latter or the former, actually, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, which is you know the the, the idea. Right. And for me, you know, I think, uh, you know, yeah, I'm putting myself out there, but 
I also, if you love anything, you will get better at it and you will get good at it. You, you just don't have to get to the master level. I don't need to do 10,000 hours before I post some of my skulls. Right. No, I mean, it's as long as I go, ah, oh, that, that, that one uh, expresses what I feel. Oh, great. You know, I, it, like I put up the Yoda, mm. uh, uh, you know, a couple of days ago just for fun because I felt like sculpting it. And, you know, it's not the best sculpt, but whatever. Mm. Put it out there, you know. And if people don't want to see it, then you don't have to look at it. <laughs> uh, but I, I do enjoy and I feel like I'm a better person for it mm. is the important. thing. Yeah. And I feel like I'm actually living... Uh, uh, a very true life. Yeah, you right want to live the way you, you know? live. Yeah, yeah. And that's it, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Anyway, no, yeah. that's a very, that's a very good. Uh, I think uh, um, point to to kind of wrap things up. Um, yeah, it's very true. Like that. Um, I mean, we we kind of uh, circled back to to I think one of their earlier points. I mean, honestly, like similar to what we talked about with Simon or or before then, right? Um, that don't don't let any kind of artificial dogmatic view on on like practice or creativity like hold you down um like do what you really want to do and and be i mean most of all be honest with yourself about it right um i think these kind of things cannot come out of like a feeling of like envy or like uh, a jealousy uh, or anything for your fellow FOMO, artists yeah yeah, yeah that, exactly yeah. like or the thing you have to do like the, the Honestly, there is it, it. You really don't have to do anything. Um, it comes. It needs to come from a very true place, like with with yeah, for something you really love doing, for something you have a lot of excitement and motivation to do every day, because that's really the only way how you how you uh, will get past um, a certain level yeah. of like the yeah. plateaus. I mean, everybody has plateaus, right? Um, and and get to a point where you're really happy with it. Yeah. Great. Okay. Totally agree. Yes. Cool. Okay. So I think All that's right. it for this episode. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, please like and leave us a comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all the uh, good things here on YouTube. And um, we'll see you guys in the next episode.